Hey guys, this is the Ebbets Rock episode. I just kind of wanted to give this little intro here because I wanted to explain some of the info that I don't think would come across very well through the video, and I don't think the description would be a very good spot to put that here. Usually that's what I use to convey the information that I don't think comes across well in the commentary, but I don't think it would serve a purpose here. So, I had a couple alternate ideas for getting through this dungeon before I came up with the strat I'm using now. Basically, I thought... My first thought was obviously running around randomly, and I think that's a terrible strategy, because I hit a lot of encounters trying to get through. I mean, I'd probably just get stuck running back and forth between the same place over and over again at some point, or not be able to find the switch in a particular room. So I think that would just be a pain in the butt to watch. It would take super long, and it would... I'd have to fight through a lot of random encounters, which is, of course, bad. The second thought I had was much cleaner than the first, but I didn't really like it entirely. Basically, it was walking up to the first switch from the entrance room, and then sometimes, like on occasion, I'll appear just to the right of a chest. So I take one step to the left, check if a chest is there, and if it's not, just warp out of the dungeon, and just wash, rinse, and repeat until... I have enough coral, but that that seems kind of boring, I think. I think it doesn't really play with the main gimmick of the dungeon, which is kind of why I prefer this way better. So first off, I'm going to give some background information for how the dungeon actually works, so that the rest of the explanation makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Basically, the chest, you, know, you have to feed it uh, coral, which you already know, but the important thing to note is that it takes exactly 22 coral, to feed the chest, and uh, if you try to feed it less coral, it doesn't accumulate. So if you feed it 21 coral, it's gone. You wasted your time. So you want to make sure you have 22 coral before you feed the chest anything. And as a corollary to that, it means that I absolutely don't want to talk to the chest in until I have 22 coral. So I want to make sure I absolutely don't go near it. And I also want to make sure that I get around 11 chests or so, because that's probably going to be enough. The chests give 1, 2, 3, or 5 coral a piece, and they seem to be evenly distributed. I can't say that for sure, I've got nothing backing that up, but they seem about evenly distributed. So, on average, 11 chests should be far more than enough to get 22 coral, even though it theoretically might not be enough. Because theoretically I could only get 11, but... I'm just going to go through and hope that I, I get enough, and I probably will. So as for the main mechanics of the dungeon, I'm just going to show the dungeon on the screen right now, and these are all the possible rooms you can appear in, and you may be thinking right now, like, I, I swear I remember some rooms that weren't on there, like, longer and more slender rooms, that sort of thing, like, kind of looked like these, but not really, but basically these rooms are the only ones you can appear in. The trick is that the game also randomly opens up passageways between these rooms when you step on the switch, so the, the passageways will constantly be changing, and that's what will uh, make it seem like there's a lot more different types of rooms than there actually are. So I'm putting them up on the screen, but the majority of these actually don't affect me at all, like there's no way I'll accidentally walk into them. So I'll get rid of uh, all the ones that don't matter at all. Okay, the first thing to note about this dungeon is that I'll be holding A at all times. This just makes sure that I'll grab any chests that I happen to come across. Now as I said before, I don't want to run into the chest that eats the coral prematurely, so it kind of forces my hand in case just in case I happen to land in the chest room, I always want to walk straight down first all the way to make sure that I'll exit that room immediately if I happen to appear in it so that I don't run into the chest by mistake. But the trick to this dungeon is that what happens when I'm in any of the other 11 rooms that are scattered around. Now, I can only appear in one spot in each room, so there's only one place that I have to be aware of for e each of these rooms. So... For instance, if I'm in room 8, I'll just walk all, all the way down, hit the teleporter, and I'll be out of that room, so that one kind of is a non-event because I'm already leaving it anyway. 
If I'm in the entrance room to the dungeon, I'll just walk straight out of the dungeon, and obviously I'll know where I am at that point, so just walk back in and continue on from there. In most other cases, I'm just going to hit a wall, so nothing special there, but I do have to note where I'll end up because that'll be important later. Now, the, the trickiest one is that if I'm in room 4, it depends on whether the bottom passageway is open, whether I'm going to just hit a wall or whether I'm going to run down straight all the way through the passageway and grab that chest that's down in room 7. And if I'm in room 2 and the bottom passageway is open, I'll run down and grab the chest in room 4. So at that point I still don't know which of the two I'm in. But at that point I can go all the way up. If I hear the chest noise, I go all the way back up. And if I started in room 2, I'll hit the teleporter in room 2 and that one's off the list. And if I'm in room 4 and the top passageway is open as well as the bottom passageway, I'll run straight up through the bottom passageway back into room 4 and then straight up through the bottom pa the top passageway back into room 1 and grab the chest in there for kind of a twofer. And from there I know where I am so I can navigate to the exit. And if I hear nothing, the bottom passageway in room 4 was open but the top passageway wasn't. So at that point, I'll walk back up and hit a wall and get hear nothing so I'll know I'm in room 4 and I'll exit in room 4. So the next step overall is to go all the way back up and there's a couple reasons why I want to do that next. It knocks off a couple rooms off the list and it's really important to get rid of the save point room because I'm pretty sure that one shows up more commonly than any other room in the dungeon. So that's definitely one that I want to get rid of on the list very quickly. The other important thing is that it also means that when I go back in to fight Haydn later, like 95% of this route is not going to change at all. Pretty much the only thing that will change is room 8 and the chest room, obviously. But So that's the that really important reason why going up is the next thing that I should do. So if I'm in room 2 and the bottom passageway was not open, now's the time when I'll exit. So that, that one's completely done now. If I'm in the save point room, I'll hit the save point. Obviously I'll know where I am because there's only one save point in the dungeon, so then I leave. And if I'm in room 4 and the top passageway was open but the bottom passageway was not open, then now I'll grab the chest in room 1 and leave through room 1. However, in this case I don't know if I'm that I'm in room 4 if I don't hear a noise because I could be in one of the many other rooms where I just run into a wall. And also note though that in room 7, if the top passageway is open, I won't run through it. Like I won't run all the way through it up into room 4. That that just won't happen because I'm not lined up with it. But there's some aesthetic changes in the rock around there and it means that if the top passageway is open, I'll end up one space higher than if the top passageway isn't open. And that will actually mess things up later, so I have to be prepared for that. Okay, so if you notice, in both room and 3 and room 6, I'm standing one step to the left of the switch. So, I mean, it's super obvious that I should just take one step right here. Get rid of two rooms for exactly one step. That It's no-brainer. So, the only other thing to note is that in some rooms, like room 5, I am already up, pressed up against the wall there, so I'm not going to actually take a step right. But in any case, I'm just going to be taking a step right or running into a wall. Nothing spectacular in any of the other rooms. But in room 5, this means that if I take left one step, I, I'm i already right next to the chest pretty much. So I grab that, and then it's easy enough to exit from there. So that costs, for the total of two steps, I get rid of three rooms on my list, and I also get a chest in one of them. So, super easy choice. But now so where it starts to get a little bit, a bit more complicated. The, my next movement is to take one step down and one step left. And if you notice, there's five different possibilities of what could be happening right now. And this gets rid of one immediately, because in room four, I'll just leave the room. And it divides the others uh, nicely. So if I don't hear a chest noise, that means that I'm either in room 9 or I'm in room 7 and the top passageway is open, because that means that I took one step 
up farther than I would have otherwise, which means I'm now standing above the chest instead of running into the chest and grabbing it. So that means I want to check down below me because the chest is theoretically one spot below me if I'm in room 7. So I check below me and if I hear the chest, it's easy enough to just walk around the chest to reach the exit and that's done and over with. And if I don't hear a chest at that point, I'm in room 9, which means that I mean, I could just exit immediately, but I'm already standing like right next to a chest and I know where it is. So I go left to grab the chest, and then I easily navigate out of room 9. Now after that down and left that I did earlier, if I did hear a chest noise, I'm either in room 1 or I'm in room 7, and I can't really tell the difference at this point, but if I walk clockwise around the chest, I'm getting closer to the exit in room 1 at least, and if I'm in room 7, I'll reach the exit right then and there. So at that point, room 1's the only possibility if I haven't already exited the room, so I just go left and up and reach the exit of room 1, and that's one cycle complete for sure. Basically, I just have to follow this algorithm over and over again every time I teleport out of a room. I can just restart from the beginning and everything should be good to go. There's plenty of opportunities to grab chests. If I'm in room 5, I get a chest and I barely take any steps at all. If I'm in room 4, I essentially get a chest for every passageway that's open, top and bottom. And if I'm in... What was the other room? If I'm, if I'm in room 7, I'll grab the chest for sure. No matter, regardless, it'll just be a slightly different route. So, let's get to the actual recording. Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So, time to finally take on Ebbets Rock and it will thankfully be a little bit better than I anticipated that it might be. I was worried I might just have to wander around the cave randomly or shenanigans like that, but thankfully that's not the case. So I've uh, got everyone decked out here. Uh, Strago's got pretty much nothing on because I don't care, and Realm's got literally nothing on except the Relic Ring. Well, actually, I think she had something else, but I forget what it is. The point is, she's got the Relic Ring, so if she's dead, she cannot be inflicted with zombie. So, that's pretty much her only uh, purpose in this fight. So, before I do anything in town, let's just, uh... Actually, maybe I should do the events in town first. I don't think they'll heal me, but... You never know, right? Basically, I just want to get Strago and Realm killed off in a random encounter. Because... Strago, I want to enter the fight at low HP. And... Realm should be dead for the fight. The reason why Realm should be dead is that... Haydn, if is if there's a dead character on the field, all he'll do is try to inflict them with, uh... What's it called? He uses that attack that inflicts zombie on dead characters that no one really cares about. I don't know why I'm totally blanking on what it's called right now, but it doesn't really matter. But he'll do that literally every single turn, so all I need to do is have Realm lie on the ground dead with a relic ring on, and Haydn will do absolutely nothing. Which brings it down just to his Hyde Knights. And that makes the fight very easy from there. So Haydn isn't possibly the main point of attraction here. It's more of his dungeon, really. But I have plans to deal with that as well. This cutscene takes a while, so it's still not over yet. I don't remember this cutscene well enough, like, where the noises would appear in this cutscene for some reason, so... Mainly just checking every once in a while. The other characters basically can't be heard at all, so... I guess uh, something could go wrong if Gogo -Go gets murdered somehow, but... That seems fairly unlikely, considering there's three targets and... He's got 126 M blocks, so... Wait, what? Uh, how did I exit town there? I actually... Did I forget to go all the way down and then... I was supposed to 
exit town when I go down after I do that? Whatever, I don't care. Everything went perfectly according to plan. That wasn't all luck, what are you talking about? Maybe I hit an NPC on the way down and then I just happened to line up perfectly. That, if that's so, that's actually kind of hilarious. So now I just need to get Strago and Realm killed. Oh yeah, I've got the Moogle charm on. What an idiot. Let's just uh, remove that real quick. And watch me have a blooper because I forget to put it back on at the beginning of the next segment. not gonna stay now is it there we go so now I can actually get encounters instead of just walking around like a ninny I doubt somehow that the random chumps on this uh, continent are going to be able to take out Mog and Gogo so probably in the clear there just need to switch turns for a while so I can make sure of who's dead Realm and Strago are on player one, and uh, the other two are on player two. So I know to run when I stop getting player one noises. You know, I could probably hit Strago or something. Although, of course, my characters aren't exactly massively well equipped. I just, for the sake of humor, I just shoved leather and uh, mythal rod on Strago. Cool, all I have left are Mog and Gogo -Go now, so now I can just run away from them. There we so I guess it was a pincer attack rather than a back attack. Not really a big difference either way. Wasn't sure if I was one step to the left of uh, the maze or not. So yeah, now I'm lined up with the airship. All is well. Skills, item, save. Or not. There we go. I always mess that up for some reason. But of course that was just like the before the segment there, so... Well, time to get to the meat of this segment at any rate. In there in there, and now's where the fun begins, because now's where I don't know where I am. All I know is how to figure out where I am, and that's just as good. So all the way down doesn't seem to be getting me anything. Room 4 slows down everything else a lot, but if I actually do start in room 4 with uh, the bottom passageway open, it's the fastest way to get to a chest. And if I start in room 4 with both passageways open, that's even better, because I can get two chests for the price of one. Right. Nothing there. That's good. Left. Down. Left. Down. Left. Up. All the way right to the switch, and I'm out of here. So that's one out of my 11 chests that I need. And now I literally am out of here. That's not very useful at all. I should not hold A when that happens, because I might enter the airship as that by accident, and that would be bad. I mean, it wouldn't be too bad, because I can technically take off my blindfold at that point. So it wouldn't be a run ender or anything, but it would be irritating to say the least. Down doesn't seem to be getting a uh, save point. I'm pretty sure the save point comes in clumps, but there's not really anything I can do with that knowledge, because if I deviate from the pattern, I don't really know what's going to be happening, so there's probably multiple patterns, tons of multiple patterns to get through this area, but... Down. Still seems to be getting me nothing. Up. I'm at one chest, so. Right. Left. Down. Left. Down. Left. Okay, I was in that room again. So two out of eleven chests. Room nine for both of them, so far. Down's still not giving me anything, but that's okay. 
up. I'm not sure if uh, planning this out actually saved time in this run over actually f uh, just running around randomly and hoping to get lucky. But it'll certainly save you time at the very least. Right, left, down, left, down, left. Wow, uh, I keep getting room 9. Not that I'm complaining because there's a chest in there, but still. The worst room is probably... Well, the save point room anno is annoying, but it's not the slowest. The slowest is uh, the rooms that I go up and then take right one step and then I leave. Because those are the ones where I don't get a chest and I take the largest amount of movements. And I don't get the cue like the save point just telling me, hey, okay, time to leave the room. After, when I'm going up. Uh, I was about to say, is this room 9 again? Down, left, left, up. Okay, it's not room 1. It is room 7. Well, it was room 7, not that that information is useful to me in any way, shape, or form now. So I'm at 3 out of 11 chests. That light keeps going on and off, and it's really annoying me. <laughs> uh... Right? Ah, dang it, that's the worst thing. That's okay. That's... It's not useful when I reach the chest room, but nor is it exactly a disaster in any way, shape, or form. Considering I just leave immediately. I don't care if I get that one three or four times in a row, because it doesn't really slow me down much. All the way up to the top. Still haven't gotten any luck with room four. Right. Dang it. That's not useful. I'm starting to think that if I just hold A and don't actually press A again, I'm not going to step into the airship. Because I was holding A that time too, and I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, save point. Thank goodness it gives me a noise when I step on those tiles, otherwise this would probably be very disastrous. And the chests provide an extra point in the room which I can get to that I identify which part of the room it is. And there's only one chest I'll hit that when I hit it I haven't quite identified which room it is yet. And turns out that's not too much of a pain. Ah, save point room, go away. And let me guess, it's probably going to be the save point room again because that happens a lot. I'm pretty sure. Yep. That's kind of annoying and not very helpful at all to have that room a few times in a row. Oh, nice. That's room four. And I, the bottom passageway was open. But it appears the top one was not open. So. Down, left. Down some more. I also think... Oh, wow, that's lucky. Now I'm up to five. I also think that the, uh... What was I gonna... Oh, nice. That's five and six. Now I've totally forgotten my train of thought, but who really cares? Six chests out of eleven. So I'm over halfway there at this point. Isn't this so much nicer than trying to randomly guess? Dang it. Oh yeah, that, now I remember what I was going to say. The... The save point room and the chest room, and the entrance too, are, I think, all on a timer. They'll come around periodically. The other rooms are more random. I'm not sure why I'm explaining the mechanics, because I'm probably going to explain the mechanics in my introduction thing, but whatever. I haven't said it yet from my perspective, so it still feels like it needs saying, you know? Still nothing there. Right. Left. Nice. 
up to seven. Nice, eight. Making good progress now. Wait, how did that happen? I swear that shouldn't be possible, but... I'm not really complaining about that happening, because now I'm at 9 out of 11 chests and nothing went crazy, but... I'm now really confused as to what happened. Which isn't good, because I don't want to be confused here. Oh well, if that falls into my plans perfectly, it falls into my plans perfectly, I'm not gonna complain. But it definitely leaves open the possibility that maybe I missed something else, too. Uh, that's nasty. Either that or I just slipped up when I was pressing the button. Right. Left. This room again. Ten. And then all I need is the save point. I can't really alter my route at all at this point, but... Unfortunately, there's no way to check how much coral I have without reviewing the footage, so... Which I will allow myself to do, I mean... Otherwise, how am I supposed to upload the dang things? <laughs> so that means that I can't check until I actually call the, the mini-segment quits. So I'm not about to just... I'm not able to check on the save point if I hit the save point, which is why I'm going to 11. Otherwise, I just uh, check every time I hit the save point how many I have, but that's not possible. Okay, this spot. Didn't hit the save, I mean, the exit this time, so I must be in room one. It's all about process of elimination. Eliminate all the really easy rooms first, and then I've got less rooms to actually have a more concrete puzzle with, sort of thing. That was 11, right? So, I'm just looking for the safe point at this point. If I get some extra chests, though, I'm not complaining. Right? Left. I don't have a way to alter my pattern. That will actually make this any faster, but... If I hit the overworld, like the entrance tile, that'll work just as nicely, too. Yeah, that's what I don't understand, that one. So I swear there wasn't supposed to be an... Oh wait... I think I might be able to go down from a certain room, hit a chest, and then go back up to the switch, but I don't think I really... I think I noted that at some point, but never uh, made a note of it later. Is that in room 2 that that... no can't go around down to room 5 from room 2. So where does that happen? Can't be room 6. Maybe it's possible from room 3 to room 6. It's definitely not 4 or 1. And there's no vertical passageways in 2 or 5 or seven, so... I mean eight, not seven. And I know that the passageway from uh, six to nine is twisty, and I wouldn't be able to get through that by mistake. So yeah, it must be three to six. I'm not complaining, I probably should have made a note of that though. I'll do that after this segment, because I don't want to forget for Brave New World. Funny, I was getting the safe point room too much earlier. I guess it's only to be expected. At least that one's on a timer. Well, this is the chest room. That doesn't help me. Oh, nice. And I was already on save. Alright, so that's probably the end for that mini-segment. 
I'll review the footage to make absolute sure, but 12 minutes, I, I honestly didn't expect it to take that short amount of time when I started this, but <laughs> whatever. Alright, time to do it. Let's finish off the last dungeon before Kafka's Tower. Let's just keep holding up. Only one miner changed the route, surprisingly enough. But I still need to do everything the exact same before. I definitely have enough coral. What was I thinking, saying I was going to go check the recording? It, took, it was a lot faster just to go up to the chest and say, hey, you know what, hello, uh, I'm here. Gee, is this enough coral? Alright, so I was in room 4, and neither passageway was open, that's alright. Oops, that was dumb. Well, it doesn't matter at this point. It's too much muscle memory to, to hold down after going into one of those things that I did it by mistake. But if I was in the chest room where I'm trying to go now, I would have messed it up already, so it doesn't really matter. All the way up. Right. Left. Okay. Now, hold up this time. Yep, there we go. Found the guy, just mash the A button until he makes an escape noise. Yep, yep, I get it. You're hungry. I'm hungry too. It's almost dinner time, but it doesn't mean I'm not gonna keep playing this game and feeding your face, so. See ya! Alright, now I walk up until I hear. I mean, until I get to the text box anyway, which could be any amount of time from now. Alright, open the menu. Relic, Mog, I set this up earlier. Equip, top slot. One, two, three, four, five. And now Mog's got the ribbon, which makes him essentially impervious to almost everything. Alright, so. Hayden, what a joke. I hope the battle is not messed up, because sometimes when I go into this fight, you can't see Hayden or the Haydenites. You can't see the sprite layer, essentially. That must be an emulator bug. But I don't. I can't really check that, obviously. So if you can't see anything either, I apologize. <laughs> A ranker, hit the top enemy. Now I gotta keep track of how many hide knights are still alive. Because sometimes they do nothing, and I need to make sure of when they actually die. Air anchor. Left. I hit, I hit the one that I initially target last, that way I don't need to memorize a whole pile of different possibilities. Oh, if the middle one died, then do this. If the top one died, then do this. No, I'm gonna... One's dead. Wow, did Gogo -Go actually get hit? I think Gogo -Go might have actually gotten hit. That's a shame. This is Strago, that's okay. Item. And since I've gotten everything sorted out already anyway, this is a good time to apply re raise. One, two, three, four. Now let's just wait till Gogo -Go gets on his feet again. There's only one Hide Knight dead, right? The thing is, I need to kill all the Hide Knights. That's two. I need to kill all the. Yep, yeah, that's three. As I was saying, I need to kill all the Hide Knights, with, like, other than the left one, who can't be killed by instant death. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because... I... I need to make sure that Hayden doesn't actually die before all the Hide Knights are dead, and if I just used that mine from the beginning, that would actually not be as likely as I'd like, so... Air Anchor for the win. Alright, now just gotta be quick here. When Mog's turn comes up, just drop the Phoenix down on him and I'm done. 
Phoenix down. I mean, normally this would be a bit of a cheese strat, but I don't really care here. He'd be a chump either way. So, I mean, you saw how the first half of that battle was going, so... I just need to revive Gogo, -Go, I think, and I think he'd just be able to take care of it from there, nothing crazy. And even if he couldn't, I could probably re-raise the whole party and get a ton of mileage out of that. Haydn dies from just three travelers, so... In fact, I actually had one test run... Well, one of my two test runs, Haydn died before Gogo -Go hit the last Haydn, and I was like, what? Come on, just give it to me. Weirdly enough, none of the Hyde Knights are actually undead. Only Hyden himself is, so... So, Knight is relaxing, uh... Like, jaunt around town before we enter the most very definitely final dungeon of the game. Hopefully no NPC shenanigans on the way out, because that would just be irritating. But it's the mazes, so I could probably recover. I'm assuming this will go back to regular Themeza music at the end of this cutscene, so... Wow, uh -huh, right on cue. And nothing after that either, apparently, so all the way down. And we're essentially done with this dungeon. I mean, we are done with the dungeon. <laughs> this isn't. This doesn't look like a dungeon to me. In fact, it doesn't look like anything to me. But <laughs> details. Left down. Left down. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to go all the way to the left there at all. I have no idea what I was doing before. And uh, did an NPC get in my way? Oh yeah, right. I have to go left into the building. I'm being an idiot. Now I can leave. There we go, no NPC hacks today. And I should still be on Relic. Equip, skills, item, save. I remembered for once! And... Actually, that turns out the last, it's the last time I'll have to do that, because I won't be saving again on the overworld in this run. So, see you next time.